Never ever have enough time to play at all. You know everybody wants Hello and welcome to Otter yeah. Creek in Rio Grande. It's currently five degrees in northwest Oklahoma. So I chose to not do anything in the train layout room and, of course, nothing in the shop area because uh, <laughs> that area is not heated. Uh, we're having to run the house heater quite a bit just to, to keep things comfortable in here. So I thought, well, I'm just not going to do anything at all this weekend uh, outside. So I thought, why don't I do a little update and uh, just kind of briefly tell you a few things uh, about the actual model railroad and, and maybe show you my current track plan. Uh, one of the first things you might wonder is why Otter Creek and Rio Grande? Well, uh, the Rio Grande part's pretty obvious because there was a real Denver and Rio Grande that existed, unlike the Otter Creek in Rio Grande. I actually live right on Otter Creek. Uh, truth be told, I, I live on what used to be the, the MK&T, the Katy Railroad that runs through Texas, Missouri, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, and a few other states. So uh, my father had a few things that, uh, that I inherited from him that had Otter Creek as either a password or uh, the actual business or something along those lines was Otter Creek because this is the, the area that he grew up in, my whole family grew up in. So uh, Otter Creek is just a way of, of keeping the name in the family. Now, another question you might have is, what exactly is the OC and RG? Uh, is it a specific prototype? And the answer is no. This has been a, a particular problem of mine. Uh, exactly what do I want to model and why? And it's a complicated answer because I... You know, when I first started planning this, it's probably been five years. The, the current track plan that I have right now is, is probably the fifth or sixth rendition. Uh, there, there's been at least, at least five other renditions of this track plan. Uh, the first one was actually an in scale. Uh, and so what I really wanted to model was the Colorado Midland. The problem is, is that when I made the switch to from N scale to HO, for some strange reason, a bunch of HO narrow gauge equipment started showing up in the mail. It was really weird. Uh, it just, you know, a bunch of K-27 started showing up, and then a K-28 showed up. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's a K-36 and a K-37 somewhere out there just waiting to show up in my mailbox. And, and it, it really kind of came as an epiphany to me that maybe I don't actually want to model standard gauge. So here I am with... A track plan based almost solely on the Colorado Midland and <laughs> nothing but narrow gauge equipment. So what do you do? Well, I guess you just kind of figure out what kind of model railroader are you? And you know, I, I am not what you would call a rivet counter. I... I I, I love the historical aspect of what model railroading is, uh, but bottom line, I, I'm a modeler first. Uh, I, I'm not overly concerned about whether or not I've got the right uh, steam engine at the right particular point of time pulling the right freight trains. <laughs> 
you know, what I'm more concerned about is, am I producing something that is beautiful, uh, photographic, you know, is, is it actual, a, a beautiful work of art, I, I guess is what it comes down to. I, I'm, I'm definitely a modeler first. Uh, I'm more concerned about what do things look like than whether or not I've actually represented any one particular prototype uh, as it existed at any particular point in time. So as I move forward, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I guess it's called a proto lance. Uh, I apologize if I don't have all my terminology right. But I'm, the Colorado Midland is going to be the muse, if you will, for my model railroad. Uh, I'm going to use it as a template, if you will, to create something that is my own, that I don't have to get bogged down in all kinds of details. You know, do I have the right engine? Do I have the right... Uh, anything and everything that existed at any particular point in time. I, I don't want to get bogged down in those kind of details. I just want to create something that is usable. Uh, you know, I, I want a well-working, well-running model railroad that if I can convince four or five of my friends to come over and maybe run trains... Maybe I can create another model railroader because I live in an area where there are no model railroaders pretty much. So, so here I am. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to try and do my best to just create uh, a model railroad based on the model, based on the Colorado Midland, but I'm going to do a narrow gauge version and I know there's probably going to be a lot of narrow gaugers you know that are going to go what and their heads are going to explode because the Colorado Midland was standard gauge and it's not going to be the Colorado Midland it's, it's going to be the Otter Creek and Rio Grande and that's going to be okay uh, it's my it's my railroad that they say that's rule number one so that's what I'm going to do and so I'm going to show you the track plan that I have as it exists right now. Uh, hopefully this is pretty close to what the end result will be. So this is my track plan. Uh, what I'm going to model is the trackage that existed from Leadville, Colorado to Basalt, Colorado with a branch line from Basalt to Aspen. Uh, what I wanted was a walk-around layout with a reverse loop at each end and some staging. Uh, so this, this is kind of where it begins. This is lower staging uh, and or I'm going to kind of pretend that it's uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, and or all points further west than Basalt. Uh, the staging tracks here, I think I've got six of them. I probably have twice as much staging as what I need. Uh, and as you leave, you're going to notice that a lot of this and it, it doesn't necessarily show it here, it's kind of hard to represent, but a lot of this is hidden. And as a matter of fact, from here, all of this is hidden. And I think the first time you'll actually see the train is right here. And then this may or may not be hidden as well. Uh, this will have to be. And then the next time you see the train will be right here somewhere. You know, one of the difficulties that, that I'm facing is that I did not want a helix. I absolutely didn't want a helix and try and create more than one shelf. Uh, and my understanding is these Blackstone uh, 
locomotives that I have on a 3% grade at best with free rolling stock can pull five cars. Well, I don't want to pull five cars. I want to be able to pull at least eight, if not 10 or 12, which means that all of my grades need to be considerably less than 3%. Uh, so that means that I kind of had to wind the track around to create distance so that I can pull a 1% grade uh, to get the height that I want when I initially get back to this area, which is Leadville. Uh, so the first stop once you leave uh, staging is basalt. And basalt is, it's a division point, I guess. Uh, I'm going to do my very best to accurately represent the town of basalt. I think that this track plan is pretty dead on. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to have all of these yard tracks wrapped back around here like you saw in the previous uh, picture. I may or may not. I don't think I need them, uh, to be honest, but I may or may not do that. But this town right here, all of these storefronts, if, uh, if you've ever bothered to actually watch my intros and outros, uh, most everything you see is the town of Basalt. And I'm going to try and there's several of those pictures I want to actually recreate with my own layout. I just think that would be really cool if I can do that. Uh, so you're going to come from staging into here. And then as we continue on towards Leadville, you'll leave this area. And this area here is Hellgate. Uh, I don't think that's an accurate representation of where it actually existed on the real Colorado Midland, but this area works well, I think, to kind of represent that area. Uh, and then you can come into Peach Blow. I plan on having a mine, I believe, at this end. And then at this end, and this may actually end up being a whole different town, I'm not sure. Uh, but for sure, I think I'm going to have a logging industry here so I can generate some, some different type of traffic. Uh, and then go across this trestle here, which will be somewhat of a representation of the Hagerman trestle. Uh, it won't look exactly like the Hagerman, but, uh, but it's going to be something similar. And then you're going to come in the town of Cellar. And what I've what I'm going to try and do all these little towns and make sure I've got one or two trailing point industries to switch out, regardless of whether you're going east or west. I uh, don't know what the industries are going to be in cellar just yet. Uh, that's just going to be something I'll figure out as I come to it. Uh, then you're going to come back through Hellgate into the town of Ivanhoe, where I've got a Y. And I believe there was a Y at Ivanhoe, if, if, if I've done my uh, research well enough. Uh, be a depot and freight docks and I think some Coke ovens. Just, a, you know, a few different things in here that, that a local can, can spend some time switching industries out and then continuing on. Uh, you're going to go through a little mountain pass here come out to Arkansas Junction. Now where you see the red and the green, uh, the green is standard gauge, the red is dual gauge, and the black is narrow gauge. So there will be an opportunity to swap out uh, an interchange with, with standard gauge here. There will be some cattle pins and a depot, and then, of course, leaving there, you're going to come into Malta, which you've already seen. This is the time saver. Uh, it's 90% complete. And then you're going to come across here. Uh, this is a drawbridge. 
Uh, this is going to be another one of those things that I hope works the way I want to. Uh, I plan on having the bench work out maybe about three inches from the wall and have it hinged on this side. Uh, and then it lifts up this way. And then, of course, you know, my door to the shop swings out this way. So I should be able to walk in. If I get that all engineered the way I like to, hopefully it will be a nice, solid uh, way to continue the railroad around without it looking like anything's, you know, just a lift out bridge or anything like that. And then we come into the town of Leadville, which is the, the terminus. And again, it is a, a reverse loop. And then hopefully, if I, if I can do it right, the standard gauge will continue on here. Uh, I don't represent it very well on this track plan, but will come into an area on my workbench beneath the town of Cellar so that I can change out some of the standard gauge equipment and run it back around if I, if I need to. Uh, I may also uh, come off of the dual gauge with one or two tracks of narrow gauge so that I can also have some staging on the backside here if I need to. It's just going to kind of depend on how all that works out. Uh, and then, of course, I haven't talked about the uh, branch line from Basalt to Aspen. That's leaving Basalt this direction here. Uh, and the difficult issue is going to be here is crossing this area right here. I think part of this is going to have to be a 3% grade in order for me to gain the elevation I need to cross the tracks there. So... Uh, I might have to double the hill up here or possibly have a helper to to get more than five cars uh, to Aspen. But then that wraps around here. Uh, and I may have an industry come off of here that exists in this area, uh, kind of above Ivanhoe. I haven't figured that part out yet. I'm just going to have to play it by ear. And then, of course, you come into the town of Aspen, another Y to turn around. Uh, I've got a few yard tracks here. And then this will be a either a coal mine or silver mine, gold mine, some kind of ore in this area here. And I'll probably have a dedicated, I'm, I'm thinking maybe about a shay that just goes back and forth between here. Uh, again, you know, planning is always in process so but th that's the track plan as it exists right now uh the previous track plan had uh all kinds of ho narrow gauge in here and everything else was standard gauge and it just looked like a bowl of spaghetti that i figured absolutely wasn't going to work i think what i've got now is a little more realistic there might be some some problems here that uh, might make me change again uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to give this particular track plan a go. To help facilitate the construction and the overall planning of the railroad, I went ahead and created this uh, spreadsheet here, which helps me with the proposed uh, elevations and grades. So starting here at Grand Junction, uh, moving right to left, is the route of the train. So as you leave Grand Junction, I'm gonna go by the workbench into an area that just for reference purposes, I'm calling Cardiff. And then this Basalt West is, is the west end of Basalt Yard and then Basalt proper. Uh, so the run from staging all the way to Basalt uh, is 700 and eight inches <laughs> as as I propose on the track plan. It might not actually be that when I actually physically begin working on the railroad. But at a 1.5% grade, I figure I can get a total rise of about 10 and a half inches, give or take. Uh, and I've done the same thing here 
you know, leaving Basalt going to Leadville. You're going to go through Peach Blow, Cellar, Hellgate, Ivanhoe, Arkansas Junction, Malta, and Leadville. So from each location to the next, I know what my run is. So from Basalt to Peach Blow, I've got a run of 121 inches. Uh, so I've created a little grade calculator here. So all I have to do is, is put in 121 inches, and then if I'm going to have a 1.5% grade, you can see that I can go up a 1.815 inches uh, and be at that particular grade. So I've actually got it a little bit less here. I've, I figured I can go up 1.75. Uh, you know, so that's, that's how this works. My total run uh, from Basalt to Leadville is 331. Uh, depending on how I go about doing it. Uh, I'm going to have to probably have a little more grade to get what I want there. You know, two, two and a half inches to get the eight inches I need. Uh, and all of this is what I'm trying to do is to get where this area, Leadville, is not right on top. <laughs> In other words, I, I would like at least a foot of distance over and under for my lower staging and Leadville. So I've got a lot of things I need to consider uh, before I start doing things. So. I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got this workflow sheet. This is just kind of, you know, a prioritized list of things that need to be done. Uh, you know, I've got a workshop area, a, the time saver area, specific structures. And then I've got this, which I'm, I'm calling the larger layout testing. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I need to do is I need to test grades, test locomotives, what can they pull, uh, how many cars can they pull, uh, that kind of thing. So that, that's going to be one of the first things I do. I, I think I'll get some, uh, some bench work put up where staging is, and then with that distance, which is somewhere, somewhere around 20 feet, do some grade testing and some radius testing with uh, the locomotives. So be looking forward to that. Hopefully I might get around to doing that. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, in early March. But uh, anyway, this is this is where I'm at on on the construction of the model railroad and the planning of the model railroad, what is going to be the Otter Creek uh, branch of the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you weren't too terribly bored. Uh, if you were, I apologize. And eventually I will get to actually showing you some things that I am doing and have done. Thank you very much. <laughs>